I'm Stephanie from Math with Missy and today I'm going to walk you through one of my Desmos lessons to show you how I use it with my students. So let's get started. Today we're going to look at one of my integer addition practice sets that I created for my sixth graders. So we're going to quickly look through the set in general. Um, the way I use it, if I were to use Desmos in class, I try my best to put everything they'll need for that day in that Desmos assignment. So as soon as they come into class, I'll drop the link for this assignment into the chat, and it's also going to be linked in their class homepage. Um, the reason I do this is because it's kind of difficult for some students to get into Desmos just because they have so many things already open. So if I'm going to do Desmos, I've learned that it's best to just put everything there for the day. So for this day, because I had decided I was going to use Desmos, I started with a quick this or that question. So they just had to choose peppermint gingerbread, and I gave them a chance to explain their thinking so that way we can start class in a fun way. If you look through this activity, there's a total of 22 slides, so there's a lot of questions in this activity set. Um, in my Desmos side, I also assigned it to my classes, so I have two sections that did this on that day. I had my third period and also my fifth period class. If I wanted to assign it to another one of my classes, what I would do is just click this green assign button and I would just click it either assign to class or I would click assign as a single session code. And so this code would just be a code that I can send over to students, but I could also give them a direct link to it. So I can just copy that link over for students as well. Go ahead and just delete that session because I don't really need it. If I want to send this particular assignment over to my students in those periods, I would also just send the link over for them as well. Okay, so I'm going to actually go into one of my students' dashboards for my period three class. I've anonymized all of my students' names, so that way I can keep their information private. But in order to do that, I just click that anonymize button up here. You'll also notice that there's this orange bar on top of all the questions here. And that's what you call pacing in Desmos. And pacing is super powerful because it allows you to make sure students are on exactly the slides you want them to be on. So I'm gonna actually unpaste right now. So I'm gonna stop the pacing and you'll notice that the orange bar has disappeared. If I were to assign it to students in the beginning of class, I'll usually assign it before class even starts. And I'll go ahead and just paste them to just the warm up questions. And so that prevents students from moving on into the practice before they've even gotten the lesson. So if you take a look, these slides that I've pasted students to are the this or that question and are four warm-up questions. Currently I'm in the teacher view which allows me to see all of the students work um, and I can also go into that dashboard that provides me with that summer so this is the summary that shows me all of the student work. If I wanted to go into the teacher section up here, that will allow me to see students individual work as a whole class. And then I can also go into my student tab, which shows me the students view. Um, so if I just wanted to present my screen to the students and have us go over this warm up question, I would then just show the student view share my screen, and then we'll go over this question together. If I went to show students their classmates' responses, I would share my screen and then show the teacher end. So maybe we would go through a few of these um, answers that were given and then just have a quick discussion. After I gave the lesson, we took notes in their math notebooks. I then paste them over to the practice questions. So if you take a look at the practice questions here, um, those were all those slides on the end, and I just gave them a chance to work through it. So let's take a look at this slide. So I did give them a sketch tool, so that way if they wanted to draw their integer chips, they can, but they can also just go through and quickly solve the questions on their own. They went through all of these problems and as they were 
working. I gave them mainly independent time for this. Um, we would go through a few problems on and off as I saw students working. But the biggest piece for me was being on the summary end and seeing how students were doing. So I can see um, these students who maybe they weren't in the call anymore, they didn't get to finish the work. Um, but there were some students who like, if I look at this student here, they got the first question correct, they got these two incorrect, and the rest of those were correct. So in Zoom, I would prompt students to just like, go back, make sure you're checking your work. I'm seeing a few of you have a few incorrect questions, so make sure you're going back and checking that they're all correct. If I notice that they had this incorrect, I can also click on that student and provide them with feedback with this lesson feedback tool. So I can have, type in, check this question, make, make sure it's correct. And if I send it over, the student will then get a notification. I will also be able to see when they've read that comment. So that's super helpful for me to just be able to give students that feedback in the moment. Um, but students do need to make sure that they're going back and forth between the slides so that way they are able to see the feedback I've left them. So they had a bunch of these practice questions, then they had a few explaining questions. And these explaining questions on the students and just was feedback given from me. Um, I didn't have any sort of reveal answers. I didn't have any checks here. The only thing they had was the participation. So I would be able to see with this dot if they had submitted a response for that question. And then at the really end of class, I had them complete this exit ticket. And this exit ticket looked like this. So they had a bunch of questions here that they had to answer. And each of these gave them feedback as they completed it. So at the really end, they can submit their answer. And when they submit it, they'll see if they were correct or not. And then they can go back and edit it as well. The last thing that I've added into my students' activities in Desmos as well is a done early slide. I've noticed that my students this year are all over the place, which makes sense. They're all coming in from elementary school into middle school for the first year, so they all are at different skill levels. So students are working at different paces, um, and with their internet, I think there's also a different level of how quickly they're able to access the content. So I embed this done early slide, and I've linked their Quizlet practice sets and anything else that they can work on if they finish the set for the day. And that's been super helpful for me to just allow students to continue practicing without holding any students back. And it still allows me to also check in with students who need to in class. And I think that's just been super helpful to be able to see where students are um, and also see how they're doing on the lesson. If students were currently live, I would be able to see like a little blue highlight around their question that they are currently viewing. So I can also see students live moving back and forth along these question sets. And it's just been super helpful for me to be able to give immediate feedback with, for students and also for students to get that feedback on their own as well. Hopefully that was helpful. I know there was a lot of information here, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Have a great day and thank you so much for watching. Bye.